Tang Ying snapped a few photos, and posted them to her social media. Su Zikuan, after stowing away his luggage, sat down in the seat next to her. Noticing the woman next to him applying perfume, he instinctively took out his bomb and applied a bit, which caught Tang Ying's attention. Tang Ying then picked up one of her books and started reading. Seeing that she seemed a bit cold, Su Zikuan specially asked the flight attendant for a blanket. Handing it to Tang Ying, he said, be careful not to catch a cold. Tang Ying took the blanket and replied, thanks. Is this how you usually flirt with young ladies? Su Zikuan looked slightly embarrassed, what are you saying? Tang Ying said, we don't know each other, so I just spoke my mind about you. Surely, you wouldn't get mad at a stranger, would you? He extended his hand and said, Su Zikuan. Tang Ying also reached out her hand and said, Tang Ying. Su Zikuan asked, what brand of perfume are you using? It smells really nice. She replied, your bomb smells great too. Su Zikuan handed her the bomb and said, give it a try. She responded, I just put on perfume. Mixing two scents might turn out strange. He replied, not necessarily. Try it you might be surprised by the result. She used her finger to apply a bit of the bomb to her wrist, then sniffed it and said, not bad at all. After a flight of two more hours, they quickly arrived in Shanghai from Beijing. As they walked out of the plane, both were busy checking their phones. Tang Ying received a call from her direct supervisor, Wang Lar. Originally, Wang Lu was supposed to accompany her to Shanghai for the collaboration discussions, but due to a family issue, she couldn't make it. The two discussed the collaboration over the phone when, suddenly, Tang Ying's phone ran out of battery. Just then, Su Zikuan promptly handed her a power bank. Grateful, she said, thank you. I'll return it to you once my phone is charged. Before she could finish speaking, Su Zikuan had already disappeared without a trace. Myling was having afternoon tea with a group of ladies. They were busy comparing clothes, handbags, and jewelry while deliberately mocking their husbands for wasting money on such useless things. Buying Hermes? That money could buy a villa in the U.S., one of them said. Just then, Myling received a call from Tang Ying. She said politely, Excuse me, I need to step out to take a work call. Myling said into the phone, Lawyer Tang, if it's something important, let's discuss it at tomorrow's meeting instead. Su Zikuan accompanied his client, President Fang of Green Energy Group, to a meditation hall. During the session, he occasionally opened his eyes to observe President Fang, only to be tapped with a wooden incense stick by the resident practitioner. Startled, he quickly shut his eyes. After the meditation session, Su Zikuan discussed the collaboration between Green Energy and Wang Guo, expressing his determination to make the partnership a success. President Fang asked him, do you know why the practitioner struck you earlier? That tap was to remind you to let go of your attachments. In the evening, Tang Ying went out shopping, intending to pick out some clothes. Lawyer Wang called her, reminding her that she was representing the law firm alone for this negotiation and emphasizing that she mustn't dress like a clown it had to be formal business attire. Taking the advice to heart, she quickly picked out a professional outfit for herself. Su Zikuan also received a call from his boss. The boss emphasized that if this project fell through, the annual targets couldn't be met. Su Zikuan assured him, saying he had a backup plan. His boss responded, I don't care what plan you use, just make sure you don't disappoint me. Su Zikuan replied, understood. Tang Ying returned to her hotel room and immediately opened her computer to get to work. Su Zikuan, in his own room, was discussing strategies with his team to deal with President Ma. The team suggested that he should try to understand President Fang's psychological price. Su Zikuan received a text from a friend reminding him not to forget to attend his wedding tomorrow. He replied, Don't worry, I won't forget. In the middle of the night, Tang Ying went to the hotel lobby to print some documents. The next morning, Tang Ying arrived at the other company's office. As soon as she walked in, she saw Lu Miling, and both immediately complimented each other on their outfits, praising each other's looks. During the meeting, the absence of lawyer Wang made Lu Miling feel that she and her company weren't being taken seriously, 
and she became quite upset. Tang Ying tried to explain, but Lu Miling responded, I think the main issue is that your law firm is based in Beijing, while our company is in Shanghai. The distance really makes it inconvenient to work together. Su Zikuan attended the wedding as planned. The bridesmaid, an old classmate of his and also someone who had once pursued him, was by his side. They couldn't help but talk about marriage. She said, this wedding is so touching. He replied, it is indeed moving, but I wonder how long it will last. She responded, don't be so pessimistic all the time. Tang Ying said, we have a customer first principle. If you need us, we can fly to Shanghai anytime, distance is definitely not a problem. Lu Miling replied, if only lawyer Wang worked as hard as you. This agreement isn't an issue. Go back, draft the contract, and let's sign it soon so you can head back. Just then, lawyer Wang sent a video, leaving everyone stunned. To show the Gaul group that she hadn't intentionally skipped coming to Shanghai, she had sent a video of herself attending her third uncle's funeral. Lu Miling said to Tang Ying, your law firm making a lawyer work even during a funeral gives me chills down my neck. Tang Ying replied, that's probably just the air conditioning. You should keep a scarf in your office always handy in emergencies. Lu Miling chuckled and said, of course, but as for the contract, there's no rush. Let's talk about it later. At that moment, Lu Miling's husband arrived, and she left to have lunch with him. Su Zikuan was teased by the groom's friends, who joked, looks like you've already hit it off with the bridesmaid. You know she's the daughter of a major financial tycoon in Shanghai, right? Lawyer Wang called Tang Ying and said, even with such a major family matter, I still managed to send a video update to Lu Miling. She's definitely going to sign this contract. Tang Ying wanted to explain that the video might have actually made Lu Miling reconsider signing the agreement, but Lawyer Wang didn't give her a chance to explain. Under Lawyer Wang's strict order to secure the contract, Tang Ying bought a bouquet of flowers and a scarf, waiting outside the restaurant where Lu Miling was dining. When Lu Miling came out, she declined the scarf but accepted the flowers. However, she used Lawyer Wang's behavior as leverage to demand a 10% reduction in the deal. Tang Ying was momentarily stunned but had no choice but to leave helplessly. On the flight back to Beijing, Su Zikuan and Tang Ying happened to be on the same plane. This time, however, both were too exhausted and spent the flight sleeping. Tang Ying found her younger sister, Xinzi, in her room and felt puzzled. Xinzi explained, I had a fight with Chen Mo, so I'll be staying here with you for a while. Just as Tang Ying was about to go to bed, Lawyer Wang called and instructed her to draft the contract immediately. Left with no choice, she got up and worked through the night to complete it. The next day at work, Lawyer Wang called Tang Ying into her office and reprimanded her harshly. A contract with 10% less can you afford to cover that loss? During a video conference with Lu Miling, Tang Ying had to take the blame on behalf of Lawyer Wang but wasn't given the chance to defend herself or explain the situation. Su Zikuan's failure to secure the collaboration with Green Energy's President Fang left his boss slightly disappointed. Determined to redeem himself, Su Zikuan resolved to work harder and achieve something truly significant. Zhou Ye told her close friend that Su Zikuan was also in talks with Wang Guo, and that Green Energy hadn't been able to finalize their deal with Wang Guo either. Tang Ying's colleagues were upset on her behalf about her recent promotion, feeling that it was unfair. However, Tang Ying believed that it wasn't over yet and that the final outcome was still uncertain who would come out on top was yet to be seen. Tang Ying and Xinzi went to a bar to relax and have a drink. Through a banquet, Su Zikuan learned that President Fang of Green Energy's father-in-law, Jin Rui, was actually the real decision-maker at Green Energy. With this new information, Su Zikuan decided to approach Yu Chuan Chuan in an effort to get closer to Jin Rui. Tang Ying received a message from Lawyer Wang, telling her to return to the office and work overtime. After Tang Ying left, Xinzi checked her phone but found that her boyfriend hadn't sent her any messages. She felt deeply hurt and disappointed. On her way back to the law firm, Tang Ying received a call from Lawyer Wang, urging her to return to the office quickly. She finally reached her breaking point, 
imagining herself angrily confronting Lawyer Wang and letting out all the frustration she had built up. However, when she saw Lawyer Wang, she greeted him with a smile, hiding her true feelings. Late at night, Su Zikuan walked alone on the street, occasionally fiddling with his phone. Tang Ying was also walking alone and stopped in front of a jewelry advertisement, giving her tired body and mind a moment to recharge. Then, she noticed that Su Zikuan had added her to a WeChat group, and she was suddenly touched.